Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a Superbase overview. In this video, we're going to talk about what Superbase is, advantages, disadvantages, some pricing breakdowns, and what exactly it is that Superbase offers that makes it a Firebase alternative. Now, if you are a developer, you've probably heard about Firebase before. It's very, very popular. Lots of developers use it, especially solo developers who are building their own personal projects and startups. So this is a really, really popular solution. So of course, when we hear about an alternative, we are generally curious to see what it's all about and whether it really measures up to Firebase itself. So without further ado, let's get started. Now here you have a screenshot from the Superbase website, so superbase.com, you can go to it and check it out if you're interested. As you can see, the company itself markets itself as a Firebase alternative. So it's built to be a Firebase alternative. How that works, we're going to talk about it later on in the video, but I just wanted to show you this so you can see why we are actually drawing this comparison and why we're actually talking about Superbase as a Firebase alternative. So what is Superbase? Firstly, you should know that Superbase is open source. As we saw before, they market themselves as the open source Firebase alternative. But open source what? They're actually an open source backend as a service, similar to what Firebase is. But wait, what is a backend as a service? What does that really mean and what does it entail? So backend as a service, what is it? It's a type of cloud service model that provides some ready-made solutions, meaning a lot of the heavy lifting related to the backend part is usually already done by this service provider. In the first case, you have Firebase. Here, we're talking about Superbase. So these companies, they pull most of the heavy lifting for you so that you as a developer don't have to concern yourself with a lot of setup and infrastructure related to the backend. All you have to do is to write a front-end client, such as a web app or maybe a mobile app, and you utilize these libraries or SDKs provided by the backend as a service. So for example, you have Firebase, they provide some already made solutions. All you have to do is write your front end or write your mobile app. And this app is going to talk to the ready-made Firebase solutions. More on that in just a second. Now, I also want to highlight this is the reason that Firebase is already so popular with solo developers and early stage startups, because it provides so many out of the box solutions that these developers don't have to waste time in developing and building and testing and making sure that everything's secure and safe and ready to use. You can just use something that's already been developed by a multi-billion dollar company, in this case, which is Google, who have already developed Firebase. So this is what Superbase is also trying to give you here. Now, why did Firebase actually popularize the backend as a service model? This is what you usually think of when you think backend as a service because it is one of the first feature rich backend as a service solutions, providing many different offerings. So Firebase itself, you can use it and then you have a database, you have user authentication, so user management, login, sign up, this is where you manage all your users, storage for your media, this is where you would save photos, videos, different media that your users are uploading in your application, and then also downloading, of course, so that they can see them. Also hosting, functions. I also have a separate video where I talk in depth about cloud functions in Firebase. So I'm not wasting too much time on it here. And even some machine learning functionalities. So Firebase provides ML kit. They give you some ready-made solutions, which are already all about the machine learning. You can integrate some AI into your application directly without having to train or prepare any models yourself as a developer. So this is really good because then here you're a developer, you build this web app, and you can utilize all of these different offerings in your application without doing too much heavy lifting, without having to build them from scratch. All you need to do is simply take them and place them in your application and interact with them from your code using the Firebase SDK. So this is what the backend as a service model looks like, and this is what Superbase is trying to employ as well. Now, what are the offerings provided by Superbase? As of right now, so I'm filming this in September of 2022, what they have offered is four main things. You have a database, so similar to Firebase, they offer a database where you can store all your data. We'll talk about that more in a second. They offer 
authentication, so user management, they have different types of authentication as well. So they have email and password authentication. You have sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook. These are very popular. They're also offered by Firebase at the same time. Lots of people use Firebase for that very sole reason that they offer so many easy authentication solutions. So here you have these as well. Another thing you have here is the magic link authentication, which is when you have a link so you can, you're able to sign in without actually providing a password. This is also really cool and it's offered by Superbase. The other two offerings they have is storage, of course, for saving your media or other large files and edge functions, which is similar to the Firebase cloud functions, which are the serverless functions that you can have. These are usually event driven functions that run on the cloud. More on that later, but essentially these are the four main offerings that Superbase provides. Now, of course, we can't talk about anything without actually talking about the pricing. So how does the pricing for Superbase look like? Can you as a developer who's maybe just a hobbyist or you're just curious and you want to try it out, can you really try this out for free? The answer is yes. Superbase gives you a limit of two free projects. So you can create two projects for free and you have the following limits. So you have up to 500 megabytes of database. So you can store up to 500 megabytes, which is actually a pretty good number. You also get one gigabyte of file storage, which is also pretty good. You get two gigabytes of bandwidth and up to 50 megabytes of file uploads. Now, the number of monthly active users is capped at 50,000, which is also pretty good for a free tier. Again, this is limited to two free projects. So of course, if you're a solo developer, you can get started with this free tier and maybe later upgrade if your app takes off and you get a bunch of new users. The pro tier, so this is their second tier, looks like this, it's $25 a month, per project, and then you get all of these limits as well. So you have eight gigabytes of database, 100 gigabytes of file storage, um, and up to 100,000 monthly active users, which is really cool as well. As far as I know, when they first started out, or maybe about up until a year ago, this was much less. So the pro version actually offered way less um, amounts of storage and way less caps for the monthly active users. So it's really good that, to see that the company is actually growing and their offerings are growing as well. Of course, there's also an enterprise tier, but this is usually for very large companies and they would have to contact Superbase and make a deal with them. So we're not really going to talk about this too much. So that's really it for the pricing breakdown. Again, as you can see, as a developer, you can get started with the free tier if you have some personal projects you want to create and you're curious and want to try out Superbase as well, rather than using Firebase. So let's talk about the database offering. This is really the main part that people usually talk about when talking about these Firebase alternatives. You have a free Postgres database. So as you can see, this is an SQL database. So you have tables, relations. This uh, Postgres database is actually open source, which is definitely a huge, huge plus. So the database, again, it's an SQL database and you can benefit from tables and relations. This might prompt you to ask, however, does that make it difficult? Recently, there has been a kind of stigma surrounding SQL databases. With the rise of NoSQL, things like MongoDB and even Firebase, Firestore and real-time database, people are just obsessed with NoSQL and they sort of associate SQL with being more difficult to write and more difficult to work with. But in this case, it's really not that hard. The reason is Superbase does a ton of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. So they deal with all the infrastructure and scaling and all those things for you. So you don't have to worry about it yourself. Then you can also have an easy interface where you interact with the data without actually writing SQL code. So you can see here this screenshot taken from the official Superbase website. This enables you to work with your data, visualize it, query it, and even insert new data, doing all of this using the interface on the website. This is definitely a huge plus and makes everything so much more simple when dealing with this database. And of course, you can use this database while writing zero SQL code. Because Superbase provides some SDKs, so these software development kits that you use with your front end libraries, you don't really have to write any SQL code. You can just write, for example, JavaScript code in which you specify different parameters for your queries and you can retrieve data from the database without writing actual SQL code. 
Overall, what this does, it means that you get SQL and the benefits of it like tables, relations, and everything else, and the benefit of using Postgres as well, but much simpler and much more straightforward because Superbase does so much of the heavy work for you. Now, what are some of the SDKs and libraries that Superbase provides? Mostly they provide web SDKs. So you can use Superbase with any of the web front-end frameworks such as React, Svelte, Vue, and Angular. For mobile, they're mainly focused on cross-platform. So things like React Native, Flutter, and Ionic. Now, you also have some up and coming libraries that they have listed on their website and they are open source. So you can even check them out on GitHub as well. So you have the Python library, a C Sharp library and a Kotlin library. This is really cool because the Kotlin one will enable us to actually use Superbase with native Android apps. And C Sharp is also really relevant for Unity game developers who are actually known to really use Firebase a lot in most of their games. So they can now actually use Superbase when this library is ready to use. So this is really cool and really interesting as well. Now, Overall, what do we think of Superbase? Should we use it? Should we try it? Well, there are plenty of advantages, mainly being that it is a great alternative to Firebase. It is also open source, which makes it really good. And you always have a great community behind open source projects. Next, it has an easy to use interface, which enables you to interact with all of the features such as the database and authentication without having too much technical knowledge on how to actually use them behind the scenes. Finally, what you also have is an SQL database with text search, which is a brilliant, brilliant opportunity for you to use. So this is like Firebase, but Firebase is no SQL. Here you have an SQL database with full text search that you can take advantage of using Superbase. And finally, you have transparent pricing that is by default capped. So if you are using the free tier, you will be able to actually use it while not worrying about actually getting a giant bill at the end of the month because everything will be capped. So you have some very transparent pricing. Overall, it's a great alternative. If you try it out, do let me know what you think. Let me know if you want a more in-depth video breaking down Superbase versus Firebase, all of the technical stuff, or maybe a pricing breakdown of the two, trying to see which one is cheaper to use as a developer or as a startup. And finally, maybe some tutorials as well. Now, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and bye-bye.